Welcome again to the stories of the prophets. I've explained to you in the past episodes how things started. Uh, there was Allah, no one but Allah, total vacuum, total darkness. He created light and then he created his throne and then he created water and placed his throne on the water and then he created the pen. And then he created the preserved book, and in the book he ordered the pen to write everything that shall happen, the knowledge of the future. And then he created heavens and earth, and then he created the angels, and then he created the jinn, the unseen creatures. And then he created on earth the different things, land, soil, uh, trees, mountains, germs, and so on. And then the last creation on earth was Adam. Now I will tell you the details of why and how he created Adam, peace be upon him. The two great companions of the Prophet, Ibn Abbas and Ibn Umar, may Allah have mercy on both of them, explained that jinn, jinn, these, these are creatures that we don't see, and from them there are believers and the, from them there are devils. Uh, these two companions explain to us that the jinn had already existed and were living on earth 2,000 years before the creation of Adam. And jinn had many, most of them were evil and very destructive. Some of them were believers, and there were wars between the believers and unbelievers. And they killed many of the unbelievers. And they, they spelled uh, blood on earth, uh, the blood of the jinn, and they, they did a lot of destruction on earth. And they were always at war among themselves, believers and unbelievers, and unbelievers with unbelievers of the jinn. And a lot of killing went on earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was displeased with the jinn because the jinn were given the ability to choose the truth and they did not choose the truth. Angels don't have the ability to choose. They have only one choice and that is to obey God. While the jinn had the ability to choose whether to take evil or goodness. But they chose evil. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was so displeased with them, he sent the angels down to earth to end the killing. So there were great battles between the jinn and the angels. And the jinn, of course, lost this war and were driven out of the continents into exiles. And many of them went into deserted islands located on, in oceans. Uh, and uh, the, the two companions believe that this is the major places where the jinn live today. From there they move all over the earth, but that, this is their major lands, this is their headquarters. There are many sayings of the Prophet that point to Iblis, Satan, as being the leader of the jinn when he was sent down to earth when he disobeyed God. And uh, there are many sayings that point that their center is located on an island surrounded by water somewhere on earth, most probably in one of the oceans far away. So this is the start. When God 
decided to create humankind. 2,000 years after the creation of the jinn had dominated earth and were eventually defeated by the angels, uh, God decided to create Adam and create humankind. Now the jinn were given the ability to choose and this new creature will have the ability to choose. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God, told the angels that I will create a new creature with the ability to choose. The angels were puzzled. Again, I'm telling you these stories because, again, they are mentioned in the Quran, but at the same time, uh, they explain to us, see, every one of us have this question, why do I exist? What purpose am I created for? What is my role on this earth? How everything started? People spend so many time, I mean, the other day they, they sent a, a spaceship to Mars. And the reason they say, we are trying to know how everything started. This is the nature of humanity. They want to know. They want knowledge, especially where, do we, where did we come from and where are we going to? And the Quran explains this very clearly. So uh, without understanding this, subhanAllah, it's a nature of humans to be disturbed. They, they need to know. We need to know the purpose of our creation in order to make sense of this life. These major questions in life have always had clear and ambiguous answers and explanations from God, Allah himself. And he has revealed these answers to his prophets over generations. Because these fundamental questions of life must be answered clearly, conveyed clearly to humanity. All prophets convey the same explanation on the purpose of creation to their people and to the nations they were sent to. And all the books and scriptures of God has revealed the answer over time. And the final and divine revelation, Al-Quran, as revealed to the final prophet and messenger of God, Muhammad, peace be upon him, gives us details that were not given to anyone before him and answers that were that are detailed in no other way in any scripture so why did god create us allah does not need us allah is above all wants and uh, allah uh, does not need even our praise and worship so why did he create us Again, this is a, 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 an issue of faith and uh, our lessons here are more on history and stories. But I will give you a quick answer and maybe inshallah when we meet again in a series on faith, I will give you more detailed answers. But in, in a quick answer, Allah created us not because he needs us, not because he had to create us. Allah created us because he wanted to show his glory, his attributes. He is the most merciful. If there were no creatures, his mercy will not be shown. He is the most powerful. Without creatures, his power will not be shown. And so on. In every attribute of God, it will not be shown unless there were creatures. Creatures that he would order to worship him. If they do, he will be generous to them, have mercy on them, give to them, and so on. His attributes will show. And if they disobey, then his punishment and power would show. Without creatures, they would not be shown. So, Allah created us with the order that we worship him to show his attributes. God says in the Quran, I have only created jinn and humans so that they may worship me. So the main purpose for which humans were created is to worship 
Allah, God. However, Allah is not in need of human worship. He does not need to create human beings out of a need on his part. Even if not a single human worships Allah, it would not diminish the glory of Allah, of God in any way. And if all humans worshipped Allah to the highest level, it would not have increased his glory in any way. He created us and the universe and other creatures to show and exhibit his attributes, his wisdom, his supreme characteristics, his power and his mercy. Allah is perfect. He alone exists without any needs. All created beings have needs. Therefore, it is humans that need to worship Allah. Allah does not need our worship. So the story of humans began prior to the creation of Adam. It started with a dialogue between God and the angels. When God, and this is mentioned in the Quran, in the second surah, second chapter of the Quran. When God had this dialogue with the angels, and he told them that I will create a new creature with the ability to choose. Now remember, the angels have no ability to choose. They can only obey. They cannot disobey Allah. They cannot. They, they don't have this ability. Now the angels saw the jinn who have the ability to choose. And they saw what they did of corruption and destruction on earth. And the, the wars and the killings they have done on earth. So this dialogue went on between Allah and the angels. Let's look at this dialogue as mentioned in the second surah of the Quran. Behold, your Lord said to the angels, I will create a creature on earth that will inherit me. Khalifa, inherit me. Inherit me, it doesn't mean that God will die. Inherit means that he will inherit the laws of God and would be entrusted with leading the earth according to the laws of God. They said, will you place on earth one who will make mischief and shed blood? He will do evil and start killing each other like the angels, have, like the jinn have done before. And the angels continue, while we celebrate your praises and glorify you and we glorify your holy name so they are asking why god do you create humans who will be able to choose and they will do the same thing like the angels we are glorifying you we are celebrating your praises we are saying subhanallah glory to god he said, I know what you do not know. So that was the, the start of the discussion or the dialogue. It was Allah's intention that this creature would be entrusted with ruling the earth. It would be the supreme creature on earth and would be given the duty to rule this earth according to the laws of God and err. Khalifa, which means, um, uh, takes the meaning of a deputy. We say Abu Bakr is the deputy of Muhammad, meaning that he deputized Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, after his death. He did not succeed Prophet Muhammad as a prophet, but he became a deputy, representing and continuing the work of Prophet Muhammad according to the laws given by Allah to Muhammad. And he was entrusted with leading the Muslims according to the message of Islam. In a similar manner with differences, Allah appoints an heir on earth to inhibit, administer, and rule the earth that he created. And he wanted to show his power and his greatness by creating this creature and giving him the ability to do so or to choose not to do so. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted humankind to populate this earth because the jinn 
who were ruling the earth were incapable of doing so according to the laws of God. They went astray. They went in the wrong path. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the humans with higher level of thinking. The, the jinn have more physical power. They have ability to fly, they have ability to move faster, etc. They have ability to move things faster, etc. But again, an elephant has more power, physical power than a human. But a human controls an elephant because of the higher level of intelligence. It is said by the scholars of Islam that the jinn in general, some of them are smarter than others, but in general, the average jinn has the intelligence of a 10 years old boy. So humans are far superior to jinn when it comes to intelligence. Allah gave them this ability so they can think correctly and this thinking should lead them to worship God and obey God and rule the earth according to the laws of God. So man was more powerful than the jinn when it comes to thinking. And he was better suited to do the job of ruling the earth according to the laws of God. Now the angels, however, were not that confident in man's ability that he would choose the right choice. They felt that it is very possible for a creature who has the ability to choose, to choose the wrong choice. So, let's go back to the Quran. When the Quran says, Behold, your Lord said to the angels, I will create an heir on earth. They said, Will you place on earth one who will make mischief on earth and shed blood? While we do celebrate your praises and glorify your holy name. Allah said, I know what you all know not. The angels thought that this human, this new creature, will be weak because of the ability to choose. And when you are given the ability to choose, you could go wrong. And they were surprised. And that's their, their saying to God, will you do this, is not an objection. Because they never disobey or object to God. But they were surprised. This is a, a statement of surprise. God, why do you do that? It's not an objection, it's a surprise. Because they witnessed the destruction on earth by the jinn. When they had a free choice between good and evil. Now this new creation, man may do exactly what the jinn had done and kill each other and destroy earth and have uh, mischief on earth and so on. So that is why they said whatever they said. The angel said their question. It's not an objection, it's a surprise. Now the angels were also afraid and worried that Allah is not pleased with them. They felt that they might have failed to worship Allah completely. So they wanted to ask, have we lacked in praising you, God, and glorifying you? Is that why you're creating someone else? So that's why they said, why do you create someone else? Why we glorify you and we praise you and we worship you? Uh, did we do something wrong? Are, uh, are we not complete in worshiping you? So uh, they thought this might be another reason why Allah creates Adam. So uh, again, the question from the angels is twofold. First of all, why would Allah create another being that could be as destructive as the jinn? And secondly, whether it was because that the angels had lacked in their worship of Allah. To this... To both questions, Allah said, I know what you know not. The angels spoke among themselves. And they said, well, 
whatever Allah creates, He would never create any creature more honorable to Him than the angels. And He would never create anyone who is more knowledgeable than the angels. They're comparing to the jinn. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam and he made him more knowledgeable than the jinn as we'll show later on inshallah and the, he made the angels prostrate, make sujood to Adam to show that Adam is more honorable than them. That is the start. If Adam continues on the straight path, he will continue to be more honorable and more knowledgeable than the jinn. In the next episode, inshallah, I will explain to you how Adam was created, the steps of the creation, and then how he became a living thing. He had a spirit. Before, I will explain to you how he started without a spirit, and then how did he start a spirit with a spirit, and then how he lived in heavens, how Eve was created, and then later on how we disobeyed God. This is in our next meeting, inshallah. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.